Hey guys, this is my first 4K video of the channel. I'm using the Google Pixel and trying it out, seeing if I can replace my DSLR camera uh, for taking these videos. Hopefully this works out well. Let me know how it comes out on your end. Let me know how the audio is. Um, I know how it sounds to me, but you know, I'm just curious what you guys think. I've got the dogs here. i got Bear over there and Angel there. And uh, today's video is on you know problems with going dual subs. Uh, now, I personally have had a very easy time going duals. It hasn't been a big issue for me. Um, my camera's doing this weird thing already. Already we're having problems, great. Um, but for me, I've had a pretty easy time, but I know some of my viewers have had issues with going duals. And so the purpose of this video is to kind of um, maybe tip you off to some of the things that might be causing the problem. Um, you know, this isn't to say, you know, you can't ever do these things or this will absolutely give you problems. I just know these things can cause problems. So that's kind of the purpose of the video. Um, and I got in touch with Ed Mullen, had him kind of take a look at my list and see if there's anything that he thought needed to be added or, or whatnot. And, you know, generally we pretty much agree on most of it. Um, you know, and, and as far as like, um, you know, placement and things like that goes, uh, you know, like the reason I run my subs here, that's pretty much, the only place I have where I can really run duels and have it look good and pass approval from my wife and stuff like that. I mean, this, if I was to try and corner load this sub over here and that sub over there, that sub would be over against the front door. So that's not going to work. Um, so this is kind of what I've been stuck with, but fortunately for me, it's just been easy. It's worked out. I haven't had any issues with response. It's been fine for me. So, but I understand everyone else's room is different and you may be trying to run one sub over here, one sub over there, all that stuff. So we'll go over some of the things that can possibly cause that problem. Um, so one simple thing that could cause a problem is not running room correction after you add the second sub. And this might be, some people may be like, well, duh, but other people, it, it may not occur to them. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, believe me, I've made mistakes that are really... <laughs> huge mistakes. Uh, it's, it's something that happens. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just, if you know about it and you think, okay, well now I can run room correction and it fixes your problems. Awesome. So, uh, that's just one thing. Um, you know, uh, and this is kind of a weird one. This is one that, um, is just a, a thought of mine. Uh, there are some subwoofers that come with, uh, like a, a measurement mic and their own correction software. And I don't know if those, allow for running dual subs and running, you know, measuring that sub with the other sub at the same time. If it's just measuring that sub and then you have to run that sub's uh, measurement, it just doesn't seem like it's going to work out to me. I think all subs should be measured at once at the same time in order to have it be correct, at least in my opinion. Um, so that could be an issue. Let me know if you guys, if you have a uh, you know, subs that have their own mic measurement software and you've run into that problem, I'm curious. I'm curious if they already have a solution for that. Um, again, it's not something I know of, it's just something I suspect. So I figured I'd put it in this video. Um, distance settings. Your distance settings are essentially your, your phase settings. So if your, you know, subs are not set at the right distance, you could be out of phase or you could be having phase issues if your distance settings are wrong. Now, it's important to note that DSP subs, which any sub I recommend will have a DSP in it, um, <clears throat> that introduces a delay. And so, you know, uh, so if you're running a, a DSP sub and the measurement, uh, you know, your room correction measures it at 13.5, but it's only 10 feet away, that's pretty normal. Uh, that's a normal thing because, uh, you know, you've got, uh, as the signal goes in, it, it gets slowed down a little bit in the DSP. And so it comes out a little bit later, which makes the sub look as though it's further away. So that's something to be aware of. Um, and again, I, I've talked about, you know, adding some, adding a few feet to the distance to improve the response within the room. Um, typically you want to do both subs at the same time if you can. Uh, and, you know, again, go by ear on that uh, you measure it if you can but you know just because a graph looks good doesn't mean that the sound is good I've been through that I've made I messed around with phase before 
and the graph looked beautiful, but it sounded awful. <laughs> so trust your ears more than anything else. Um, and, you know, another good way to make sure your subs are in proper phase uh, is to use the Room EQ Wizard. Um, that way you can measure the phase exactly, make sure they're both, you know, right where you want them. Um, so uh, another thing that I've seen problems with going duals is running mismatched subs. And this is something I encountered personally here. I tried to run the PB16 Ultra um, with a PB2000, and I had this dip at 60 hertz that I just could not get rid of. No matter what I tried, um, even if I could get rid of it on the graph, <laughs> when I stood up and walked around, I, I had some other wonky issues. So, so bringing out the 15-inch uh, VTF15, since they're closer in driver size, it, it, that issue went away more or less. It's still not perfect. I, I am just of the opinion that if the, if the subs are equally matched, you're just going to have an easier time. Um, you know, this sounds a lot better than running the 12 inch in the mix, but uh, you know, I'm going to find this out next week because that's when I'm getting the second PB16 Ultra in. I'm going to run them together and I'm going to see what the difference was between running in this configuration. Uh, I fully expect it'll be better, but, uh, but who knows? I'm just going to see what happens there. But again, that's not a, a hard and fast rule. There are some people that like running different size drivers and all that stuff. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying you should never do it. I'm saying it can introduce problems. And so if you're wanting just the easiest time, fully matched is probably the way to go. Um, and this also applies for running sealed and ported. Uh, even if you're running the same driver size, if you're running sealed and ported, the difference in configurations can cause a slight variation in response and can cause issues. Um, again, not a hard and fast issue. I've had some people say they really like running a sealed with a ported, and to them it sounds perfect. I I'm not saying it's, it's against the rules. What I'm saying is it can create problems. And so if, if that's what you're running and you're having problems, that might be your issue. Um, then again, you may be having perfect response mixing the two. Um, who knows? I mean, what one person considers perfect to another may not be the same. So, but what I do know is trying to run the two together can create issues. Um, again, identical subs is just easier. Um, and now this is another one. Um, you know, if you're running uh, a mono AVR, okay, where it's only got one subwoofer output and you're running a splitter and you're running one sub has DSP and the other sub does not, and you're running this configuration, okay, one sub will appear to be coming from an extra two to three feet away because of the slowdown of the DSP. So if you're running two subs that are almost completely identical, but one's got DSP in it, that slowing down of the signal could potentially create an issue. Uh, again, if you're running uh, uh, an AVR that measures the distances independently, probably not an issue. But again, I'm trying to think of anything that could potentially cause an issue. Um, so that's, that's a potential issue. Um, now, this next one's a biggie. Running wired with wireless. And this is something I've experienced personally. I tried running two PC2000s with two PB2000s back here. And I thought, hey, why not run uh, a wireless so I don't have to run the wires all the way around the room. So I ran the front two subs on wired and the rear two subs on wireless. I had no idea what was going wrong. I just knew I had these giant dips in my response that were never there before. And it, it just, I didn't know what was going on until I talked to uh, Ed Mullen. He says, yeah, you don't want to use wired with wireless. It's going to really mess things up. You either want to go um, all wireless or all wired. You don't want to mix the two. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying if you've done it, it's not, it's wrong. I'm saying it can create, it's known to create issues. So if you're having an issue and you've got wired and wireless, that could be your issue. So if it were me and I had to go wireless, I'd probably run this sub wirelessly also along with the wireless sub across the room. It's just, would be easier that way. It's still not going to be perfect. I'd rather run wired if at all possible, but it's one of those things. It makes perfect sense to run wired with wireless because you're trying to run one across the other side of the room. But 
again, as I found out, it can create some massive issues. So, uh, and now here's another one. Uh, when you're doing room correction, if you're taking samples, you know, on this side of the room and then way over on that side of the room and just wherever your seats are, I understand that makes sense. But if you're trying to measure the dis measure the samples too far apart, it can create an issue. So best to, and, and this is what it says uh, on the uh, uh, Odyssey setup, it says measure, you know, keep your measurement samples about two feet apart or so. Uh, so even though I don't have, you know, this is my, my main chair is right here. So I take another sample here, I take another sample over there, ahead, behind. I kind of, you know, see it as a hot spot of my main listening position rather than actual seats across the room. I found that by doing that, um, my bass response was a lot smoother when I measured it afterwards uh, in comparison to just running it, you know, wherever the seats were. So that can be an issue. Um, you know, so to sum up, match subs are the easiest to work with so long as you run room correction afterwards um, and you don't use wired and wireless together. Um, you know, if you're running a, a splitter uh, with, you know, a mono AVR, um, this configuration where both subs are physically matched in, in their phase. So as long as these subs are both putting out the exact same sound, they should be in phase, right? So if you're running a mono amplifier, that may be the best way to go. If you're running a mono splitter or a mono uh, subwoofer output AVR and you've got one sub here and another across the room, you could have more issues than if you were just to run them on the same plane, so to speak. All right. So again, not saying it's impossible to make it work the other way. I'm just saying that could create potential issues. All right. So as always, um, you know, if I miss something, please put it in the comments below. If you guys have any particular feedback or any particular thoughts on this, uh, I'm all ears. Um, you know, I learn a lot from my viewers and I like it that way. And so uh, if you guys can think of something that I didn't mention on this or anything like that, please put it in the comments below. And uh, again, I'll be getting the PB16 Ultra next week. Uh, so I'll have duels and so a, a, a review will follow. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks for watching and please subscribe.